Okay. Uh, hi. I'd like to talk about uh, a result of transition matrix of a, of a Markov chain um, that for for the if the Markov chain is irreducible, then the transition matrix will have um are basically will have a steady state probability that is unique. So the the way we are going to uh, prove that we are going to use the let me use another color the poem uh, from Venus theorem and uh, and we will give a proof not a complete proof like but um, almost complete proof of that and um, and to begin with like let's say I guess I uh, just quick a quick review of the Markov chain. So what we mean by Markov chain is really a, a probability state model that you can think of like you, we have many states there, then you can transit from one state to another and so on. And the transition probability, so let's say I have a state, this is a, uh, I, I call it state x1, x2, and so on, x3, x4, right? And I have some transition probability from state x1 to x, uh, x2. So it will be like px2 given x1, let's say. And, um, and this transition, transition matrix, I can just go into a matrix T here. And then Tij, let's say, or T, yeah, let's, let me write Tij, will be the probability of x. Um, J given xi. Um, actually, I assume why tij probably why tji is better because um, the ji element is pxj um, given xi. So then if I define like that, then the probability of um, xj, so you can think of the probability kind of like flow from one state to another will be like px, let's say my original probability here is pcox1, let's say. Then um, the flux going from state x1 to x2 will be like pcox1 multiplied by px2 given x1, something like that. So then I can make it like uh, just a matrix form here. So Basically, if I group this into a vector, so maybe I call it PCO here, and then I in the next um, next time instance, the total the if we look at the entire probability, probability distribution of all the states, will be just say P X maybe like for the I node there for the J node there will be like xj given xi multiplied by pcoxi, sum over i. So that's basically just t times p uh, co, let's say, and the jf, uh, JF component. So then, um, yeah, basically we can write a matrix form. So this matrix here, so therefore this matrix here, T is a, the, basically just the transition probability matrix. And um, and there's some probability here, so it's quite apparent because this is actually a conditional probability, like this TJI here is basically is just, uh, the matrix itself is like just composed of like conditional probability of like p x j x i, given x i. So and here, if you sum over the j here, so I should be equal to one way. Right? It should normalize to one if I sum over j here, sum over j. So therefore, if you look at that, like if I sum over all the call, um, sum over. Uh, so basically, this is j direction this is i direction for the matrix. So if I sum over each of the columns, it's all sum over uh, to one. Uh, for 
if we define the property as a kind of like converters and the transition matrix is multiplied from the left, then each of the column uh, vector, each of the column of the matrix is sum up to one basically. So, and, and this is a, a property required by this transition matrix. And in general, we say like all matrix have this property, we call it this Markov matrix or like a stochastic matrix. So basically the definition of this thing would be just, I will have um, some over T, J, I, some over J uh, will be equal to one uh, for all I. And, um, and also like, because it's probability, right? So I sh should have like TJ i is equal to, I'm oh, sorry, like bigger than equal to zero for all J and I, right? So, and immediately you see that like this, so therefore TJ i, T i j has to be less than equal to one, right? Because it's some of it together to be one. So it should be less than equal to one. So, um. And one uh, one property or like one observation we can make here for the stochastic matrix is like, uh, it's closed by uh, multiplication. So if I have like two stochastic matrix, let's say I have P uh, and Q, let's say they, they are both stochastic matrix. So therefore like if I have, let's say Pij and let's say this is Pjk, uh, this this is basically just the wall index. Uh, sorry, the, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, the wall index and the column index here. Um, and um, and so therefore, like sum over i for p i j should be equal to one here. And this here, if I sum over q j k, sum over j is equal to one here as well. They are both stochastic. And also, like each of the elements of the matrix to be uh, bigger than equal to zero. And, and uh, so if I look at the product of these two here, so now this P and Q here, if I look at the product, so let's say the product will be, actually the product will be just like this way. So the PQ to IK element is equal to just, uh, this this thing here basically um now if i i if i want to show of course i apparently first like because all of these are positive and bigger than equal to zero uh after the product like each of the element are still bigger than equal to zero so to show that like this product here is stochastic we just need to show that like pqik sum over i should be equal to one so for PQIK here is just J, P, I, J, Q, J, K, sum over I like that, right? And uh, I can, I can kind of like, um, kind of shift the order of these two summation. I can push this sum over I into that. And these are now just numbers, right? So I can move them around. So I can have QJK first and PIJ. And because I, this does not depend on I, so I can push the summation inside. So I become this. Now then I, if I sum over I for this guy, because this is stochastic, I will sum over get one. Then this is one multiplied by this guy. And uh, QJK is stochastic as well. Then I, so it become like sum over J here is also one. So this eventually is just equal to one. So therefore like this is true. So I have like um, P is stochastic, Q is stochastic, then the powder is stochastic as well. So it's actually very reasonable because, because I, we, if we think of that like um, multiple of like two stochastic matrix is basically saying, uh, because if you think of that, um, each of the element of a stochastic matrix like Q, uh, J, K is basically the probability, uh, transition probability from K to J, right? K, K, uh, K state to the uh, J state. 
And uh, when we have the product of PQIK is basically the, uh, the transition from K to I after first like transiting from if stochastic matrix Q and then we do a second transition of the state from uh, with stochastic matrix P. Uh, for a more spe special case, like we may have like this P and Q are just the same. So basically like in that sense, like you have the, the probability state model is like a uh, time invariant basically. Like for each time step, we have the same um, stochastic matrix, same transistor matrix. Then what we can think of is like I have P squared is like uh, P square I K. This correspond to the transition probability from state K to state I precisely with two hops. So if I, after two hops, what's the probability that like, or like what's the condition, what's the probability to get into state I if I originally in state K basically. Um, now then we, we can get into this irreducible Markov chain. So a Markov chain is like irredu irreducible. If it's transition matrix, like this transition matrix T, um, all I think of like, what, 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 do we, uh, what do we mean by this irreducible first? Like conceptually it's very simple. Like what, what does that mean is just, um, we have this state transition, state probability state model that like, from any one state, we can get to any other state eventually. So, um, or, or, or actually more precisely, I should say like, uh, for any, starting from any state, uh, I will have non-finite probability to get some other state as long as I have sufficient steps. So of course, I, if I, all I in, in the sense you can think of this entire Markov chain is connected. So if they are connected, then eventually, like, of course, I like, maybe, let me just give an example. Let's say if I have like, node like that, right? And then like, I can transit like from here. I mean, I can like, make it undirected. So this node can go both way. So of course, like this node, like one, two, three, four here, one and four is not directly connected. So I cannot in one step from one go to four. But however, like, with two steps, I can go to one to four, something like. So, and so therefore like I have P square basically will be, uh, if, okay, or like, let, let me just T again. I, I, T stand for the transition probability, uh, transition matrix. So then T for one from one to four will be, will be equal to zero because I cannot go directly from state one to state four. However, T square for one will be bigger than zero basically. So because after two steps, I can get to there. And uh, so therefore irreducible is simply meaning that like, um, I can have a sufficiently large N, maybe I use big N here, sufficiently large big N such that two to the T to M uh, I K or I J will be bigger than zero for all I and J. So then, then this will be irreducible. So as I mentioned, like, the result we have, like what we like to talk about today is like, if we have the Markov chain if it is irreducible, it irreducible, yeah. So therefore satisfy this thing here, then the steady state probability will be unique. Um, it exists and also it will be unique. Okay, uh, and also like, okay, I, I guess we, we should uh, just, we didn't actually specify the steady state probability. The concept is again, very simple. What we mean by steady state will be like, uh, essentially I have the transition, the original probability, let's say I, for the previous time step is a P. So after the transition, I have TP, right? So if it's a steady state 
I should have like TP is simply equal to P here. So, and of course, if you look at that TP is equal to P, that means that P is just an eigenvector. Oh, second, cannot wait. Oh, yeah, I don't know why. It's just an eigenvector if, uh, of P, of T, if eigenvalue one, right? So um, it turns out that like this eigenvalue is unique. So in, in, in that sense, like, uh, or like you can think of like the eigenvalue one here uh, is a simple eigenvalue. Uh, that that's is actually just the same. It's just the definition that we say a eigenvalue is simple, then uh, it doesn't have like multiple eigenvectors. So only have like one unique eigenvector. So I say this P here. Of course, I can have multiple of like of P here. It's also the eigenvector of. Uh, it's also like an eigenvector, but uh, I don't have like something like an eigenvector Q, such that Q is not equal to lambda P, but also like I have T Q. Oops. T Q U two Q Q. So that means that the steady state is only have one. So it, it will, you, you cannot have two steady states. So if you have two steady states, let's say if it, it, there were two st steady states, then it's possible that you can converge to one of those, way. Right? But what we are saying here is that like, if the Markov chain is irreducible, then we can only converge to, to that one steady state because like that's only one and only one. Actually the poem like for Venus film say more about that. It also say like, um, yeah, I'll get into the film itself. Maybe maybe I can I can immediately say what's the what does the film said. Um So the poem from Venus film basically say that, uh, said that, um, says that. <laughs> so if I have, if I have a matrix, like let's say in general, only matrix A here, and the matrix A is all positive. It means that all the elements say A, I, J is bigger than zero. Then um, it has, the its our largest eigenvalue, eigenvalue uh, will have eigenvector have all positive elements. So, so let's say lambda is the largest, or like maybe I just write lambda max here. So if I have a a a x is equal to lambda max x, so so therefore like x is the the eigenvectors of the largest eigenvalue. And then like X will have like all the elements will be positive or like non negative, I should say. So, um, and uh, of course, you can make it on all non, uh, on all negative as well. But yeah, I mean, X can be like either all because like, it doesn't change, right? If I make it all negative, right? It will be just like scale, scale. Um, a scale version of the original one multiplied by minus one. But it doesn't have, um, it, it can also basically the sign can only be like all negative or all negative, also all positive or all negative, but it cannot have like some of them is positive, some of them are negative. So, uh, and also like the eigenvectors is like, okay, maybe I write it down. So the first thing is like, First thing is this one, x i is bigger than equal to zero. Second thing, like lambda max is simple. So meaning that um, I, I, do, uh, I don't have any other, other eigenvalues uh, share the same eigenvalues of lambda max, or maybe I write it like this. So a y lambda max y, if I have y is an eigenvalue of X then it implies that like Y is just a scale version of X. Yeah. And uh, the third thing, let's see. 
own opinions for you. Um, is that uh, all eigenvalue, all other eigenvalues? So it doesn't necessarily to be the eigenvalues with the maximum eigenvalue, but all other eigenvalues um, will will not be all positive. Uh, elements, all other eigenvectors elements will not be all positive or all negative. So they cannot be, so if I have like, any other eigenvectors, like, let's say a y is equal to lambda y here. Now this lambda is another eigenvalue is not the same as lambda is not equal to lambda max here. And uh, y, I cannot have y i is all bigger than equals to zero. This this is not possible for all i is not this is not possible. So that that's basically the problem um, for Venus theorem. This is a it's quite general. It's not just for um, for the transition matrix, but it's basically for all positive matrix. So, but of course, I like, one thing I should. Uh, Kind of like remind you that like uh it it doesn't cover like all the transition major okay I should I should say like it does not directly apply immediately if we just from here to the transition matrix T we cannot just use film directly on T because I like, T does not necessary to be positive way right? T T can be long negative T has to be long negative but it doesn't has to be positive. It doesn't necessarily all the elements are positive. However, like because I T is irreducible, right? So then I know that like there's some T N here, as I say here. There's some T N here. This guy is positive. So I have some N sufficiently large. T N is positive. So therefore, like I can apply like um poem uh from bonus theorem to Tn, so I have like Tn x uh, e equal to some number x here. And, um, and, oh, okay, maybe, maybe I, uh, okay, maybe before that I, I won't, yeah, okay, let, let me, let me continue with that. So, and, and here I will jump a little bit ahead uh, I know the maximum eigenvalues will be one. So, and maybe I, I, I maybe let me use P here just to remind you guys I, that's actually the probability. So I have like TMP is equal to P and the maximum eigenvalue is one. And uh, so therefore like this is unique, P is unique. And know that like, if I have like, if I consider the original, uh, transition matrix T here. If I have T, maybe at least I have one way here. If I have P is the eigenfactors of T here, TP is also equal to one P, right? This one we imply like T to N is equal to one P, right? Or in general, if I have like lambda, if like P is the eigenfactors of with eigenvalue lambda, then this is like basically uh, P is like the eigenvalue uh, of T to N with eigenvalue lambda to N. Now, because I here like P is supposed to be unique. Let me go back to one here, lambda equal to, P is supposed to be unique here. So therefore like uh, for like T to the N, so therefore P is supposed to be unique for T as well. So therefore like this alone already show that like T um, uh, have, if, if T is irreducible or like the Markov chain is irreducible, then uh, the steady state probability is unique. But of course I, I, I here, I'm assuming that one is the maximum eigenvalue, right? And uh, I didn't show that yet, so, but let, let me just show it quickly. So why 
one is the largest eigenvalues. Um, basically, I, 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 I like to say that uh, I cannot have eigenvalue is bigger than one. So let's say if I have some eigenvalue is bigger than one. So first think of like, if I have TP is equal to lambda P. Um, and let's see. Yeah, let me pause a bit. Oh, okay, okay, I, I remember now. So the I, I forgot like we have that uh we have showed that earlier that um if t is a stochastic like t to n is so stochastic as well right and i can have a n all the ways go to infinity so if i have like let's say t t is equal to tp is equal to lambda p here t to n p is equal to lambda to the n p and uh, if lambda is bigger than one this can go all the way to infinity right so therefore i have this thing here this thing here is basically like uh, will goes to infinity as well, right? Because P is finite. At least like P, P is not all zero, like the entire thing is not, um, not the entire factor is equal to zero. Then some of the element here will be infinity. So at least I have like some of this lambda M P, let's say some I here will goes to infinity. The I element will goes to infinity, but then it's equal to T to M P I, right? Equal to this guy. But this is just equal to t to n uh, k, sorry, uh, i k p k sum over k away. Now the problem here is that like this is finite, and t to n i k is finite as well because um, this is stochastic as well. Right? T the matrix t is stochastic, so therefore it's less than. Um, uh, less than one basically. So apparently like this is k is just sum over one to a small n here, the size of the uh, uh, the length of the each of the dimension of the, um, uh, okay, n is basically just the number of states here. So therefore like this would be just a contradiction, right? Because I, I cannot have this goes to infinity on the right hand side, but on the left hand side, like it's just a finite sum with finite element, each of the elements is finite. Um, so therefore like I cannot have, this is a contradiction, therefore like the original assumption is wrong. I cannot have lambda is bigger than one. That's it. So therefore like lambda equal to one has to be the maximum um, eigenvalue. So uh, maybe to summarize again, so this is the maximum eigenvalue. So therefore by Perun for Binet's theorem, is saying that like the maximum eigenvalue is eigenvector is simple. Oh, sorry, the, uh, the eigenvector is unique. So therefore like P is unique. And I'm also like from the film also saying that like that eigenvector uh, is, can be all positive. Of course like, it makes sense because like, in that case, we expect that eigenvector is, is precisely should be a probability distribution. Therefore like it should be, uh, uh, non-negative, like each of the element. Um, yeah, so P is uh, unique. So that means that the statistic probability is unique. So, okay, uh, I guess that's, um, that's it for how we are going to use uh, for business film to show that. Now then we should step into like how to show the poem for business film itself. Um, the tools we are going to use is uh, basically the, the proof I'm following is a pretty much uh, a proof uh, from a course in Harvard. Um, but I, I found, at least I, it seems to me like there's, there's a bug like in the proof. Uh, so I, I will get into that like uh, when I, I'm there. But uh, most of the proof like is very useful like and I mean it's a very neat proof I guess I uh, unfortunately I, I believe it has a bug like otherwise I, I think it's like the best proof I I kind of like uh, I encounter like for this theorem here 
So basically use the block um, fixed point theorem as the main tools here. So the Banach fixed point theorem uh, stating, uh, stating says said this. So basically, if I have a complete metric space, um, I, I would, I would I define complete later. Or like actually I can jump my hand to say like complete just meaning that like all the Cauchy sequence will will converge in that space. So um uh if you have taken a class analysis, you will remember like all all these things. But I, I can just quickly like uh, mention this. So metric space as metric is just kind of like a measure to measure two points in the space. So and uh, so let's say I have a metric D here. So this just measure distance. Let's say I have two point D. Uh, DXY will be just the distance between uh, point X and Y. So if I have a sequence like X1, X2, and so on, X, uh, yeah, XN, and so on, and so forth. And uh, I, would, I would say this sequence is Cauchy. If they get closer and closer together, like this sequence, like each of the elements, between the in the sequence will get closer and closer together as as we have n getting bigger and bigger. So more precisely, I can have like uh, element n and m. So if like both both of these indices is bigger than some n, um, or oh, actually I should I should start with some epsilon. Let's say for any epsilon bigger than zero, um, I can make sure that like. I can have some n such that like uh, if I have like index m and n is bigger than n or bigger than equal to n, then I will have x for for basically for all indices m and n. I have like the distance be between x n and x m will be less than epsilon. So it's like this typical like uh, epsilon delta argument like, in calculus. Um, so we just like use this kind of um, um, uh, the expression to to describe that this sequence should get closer to co uh, I mean closer and closer together. Basically, if I think think of like this is a a one D like x here, it's just a one D point here. Of course, like this x and y can be like high dimensional points here. Um, this metric space like, can be, oh, like, actually I didn't specify in the beginning. It can be, it doesn't need lessons to be in real space actually, it can be any space here. Um, so that define a metric, basically the metric say, uh, just measure distance. Of course, for that to be a distance, it need to satisfy some criteria. Let's say like, I, I need to have like, distance has to be bigger than equal to zero. And if I measure the same point here, it should be equal to zero. So, so something very natural. And also I, I should have like triangular inequality like dx z is uh, less than equal to dx y plus dy z. Right? So something like if I have three points here like x, y, z here. So the distance between this x and z should be less than the distance between this one, some with this one, so on. Let's see, what else? Um, of course, I should be symmetric. So I have dxy is equal to dyx, right? I think more, more or less like, like that. that. That's the, the definition of the metric. And, uh, and as I mentioned, like if I have uh, Cauchy, like let, then let's say this is the index n here. I just want to illustrate this Cauchy again in 1D. So if my point is 1D, so it's basically just saying that like my point here, Okay, so just get closer and closer to care. Maybe I converge to this this level here. So up to a certain point, they, they just converge, right? Um, they, 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 by the way, like it doesn't necessarily it will converge. Uh, that's why we need complete. So the definition of completeness is just saying that like if my seek if for any sequence in the space, 
if the element is getting closer and closer together, then it has to converge. So it, it makes very uh, kind of natural sense, right? I mean, like it's very intuitive. Like, of course, you think, oh yeah, of course it's supposed to converge right? if it gets closer and closer together. So therefore, like, at least for engineers, we don't care too much. Like usually all the space we consider is like complete space. So, but of course we can go into like more abstract, uh, think of like, for example, if we think of like some kind of example, like, like some kind of example can be uh, the rational space. Uh, the space contain, contain all the rational number. Then you can show that like for a sequence, let's say X N is equal to X n minus one over two plus uh, one over x n minus one. So you can build a sequence like that, right? So for example, if I have start with one here, then the second element will be like one half plus one. So it's like three quarter, right? And then the next element is like three four plus uh, two third. And this will be equal to, I don't know, this is complicated and so on. So this sequence actually will, will you can show that this sequence is um is Cauchy. It's just getting each element getting closer and closer together. Uh, and you, you can see like where it will converge, right? It will converge to something like this X n minus one is just equal to X n, so it should converge to this way. Uh, and uh, M is equal to X over two equal to one over X. So actually it will give you X is equal to square of two, right? And uh, and of course, like we know that square of two is like an irrational number. So therefore, if our space is all the rational number, so therefore it won't converge. Actually, it will. It is Cauchy, but it won't converge. Therefore, it's incomplete space. Um, for for the rational number, there. Uh, actually, just a remark. Like this is the way like the Babylonian, uh compute square root of two. So it's actually just an interesting historic fact. Um, and uh, okay, what, what, what else? Okay, I just start to talk about the Banach fixed theorem, but I, I just try to give the background of like this compute, compute metric space. So, okay, basically the Banach uh, fixed point theorem saying that like for any complete uh, metric space. So, um, so for a complete uh, metric space, if we have a contraction mapping, so again, I need to give some definition of this contraction mapping. So if I have a contraction mapping, so the definition would be just like, if you think of like two points in the space, like X and Y, and after the mapping Tx and Ty and look at the distance between these two points, it will be have a distance basically less than the distance of the original two points. Then that would be a contraction. Oops. Uh, okay, x, y. And here q here should be less than one. So if I have T satisfied this, then this will be a contraction. So then for this complete metric space, I have a contraction, then there will be fixed point for this mapping. And that fixed point will be unique. So that, that, that basically um, I will have, I will have like some Tx is equal to X. This will be the fixed point. And also that point will be unique. So when we start with the uniqueness, it's easy to prove. Okay, I'm going to prove this, of course, I, the Banach fixed point theorem, um, uh, fixed point theorem actually, right? So it's, uh, let's say like if I have, let's say the pawn is not unique, then I have like let's say P1 and P2, two pawns here, and I have, they, they are different and they are also like fixed pawns they are both fixed points. So I have TP1 is equal to P1 and TP2 is equal to P2, but uh, P1 is not equal to P2. Then what I have is like the distance between P1 and P2. 
So because IP1 and P2 is just equal to TP1 and TP2, it's just equal to D TP1 TP2, right? But because I, the mapping itself is a contraction, so this will be less than equal to Q D P1 and P2. Then of course this is a contradiction because I like Q is less than one here. So therefore like this is a uh, not possible. So therefore like P1 and P2, uh, this the assumption that P1 and P2 is not the same is not valid. So therefore like um, P1 and P2 must be unique. So this proof the uniqueness here. By the way, this proof, I just uh, kind of like follow this like, from the Wikipedia. It gave a, a reasonably good and simple proof here. So now for the, oh, I'm not even sure I should erase this, but anyway, since I already did. Um, so for existence, so for existence, this is for uniqueness, for existence of this. Uh, fixed point, consider that I start with any points. I start with, like, let's say X0. I can form a sequence, X0, X1, X2, and so on. Basically X, X1 is equal to TX0, and X2 is equal to TX1, and so on and so forth. Then I form a sequence, right? So. What I'm going to show is that this sequence is Cauchy. So that, that, that means that this sequence get closer and closer together. And because I, the metric space is, itself is complete, so therefore it will converge to some point and that is exactly the fixed point. So eventually I will have like T uh, X N uh, is equal to X N plus one. And this, and this X N, um, X N plus one is essentially the same. So I have X is equal to T X and that's the fixed point. And this point is like in the in the space there because like the space itself is complete. So now to show this is Cauchy, it's just a little bit of algebra. Let's see if I can uh, pull the chart. Okay, first know that like for this sequence here, if I consider like the adjacent two point like x n minus one and x n, and the distance between them, it be just equal to d. Uh, this is like TXN, uh, TXN minus one, right? And uh, of course, like, this guy will be, um, will be uh, bounded by QT DXN, XN minus one. So then you see that like this, I can, uh, apply this iteratively. So this would be less than Q square, the X M minus one, X M minus two, and so on and so forth. I, I will eventually have like, this is less than Q to N, the X one, X zero, let's say. Um, and then I, if I look at like any two points, so from this, like if I look at any two points, like XM and XN, and let's say M is bigger than N here, uh, this will be, because like D is a metric, it needs to satisfy the triangle, triangle inequality. So it will, in general, it will be less than XM, XM minus one uh, plus DXM minus one, XM minus two plus d x m minus two x m minus three and so on and so forth until let's say d x m plus one x n right and uh and this will be each of them so this i have i can apply this equation now will be less than equal to uh, q to the m plus let me just scope all this so or maybe I can pull out Q, uh, D, X1, X0 out. So it's like Q to the M minus one, I guess, right? Um, plus Q to the M minus two and so on and so forth until uh, Q to the, 
anyway, something like this. Uh, but this, of course, I can sum all the way away. I can sum x1, x0. This I can sum all the way to one. So I say some qm minus one, qm minus two, not just sum them to like q to n, but I sum all the way back to one. So this sum, I know what it states, right? This will be just equal to uh, q to the n minus one, q to n minus one, or one, uh, okay. One minus q to n over one minus q, something like this. But of course, this again is like less than equal to one over one minus q. I can just simplify this, therefore, into dx1, x0 over one minus q here. And uh, let's see. I'm missing something here. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to do this, actually. I don't want to just do this. I, I won't want, want to pull out Q to the N first. So it's less than D X1, X0, Q to the N, Q N minus one, N minus N minus one, and so and so forth up to one, yeah. And, uh, and here, like this thing here, I can sum, not just sum up to Q to M minus M plus one, I can sum up to Q to the infinity. So I will sum all the way to infinity, but then this guy will be less than equal to one over one minus Q, will be equal to one over one minus Q. So therefore this uh, U1 trial will get like Q to the N, then I put this out, DX one X zero over one minus Q basically. Yeah, something like that. So I have like dx m x n. So for any for any m and n, the distance between them, like let's say index m is bigger than n, will be less than equal to like q to the n dx one x zero over one minus q. The point here is like this thing is finite, right? So therefore, apparently, like this sequence will be closely because for any epsilon, I can make n sufficiently large such that like the distance between any of these two points here will be, okay, bounded by this, uh, uh, I will have this factor here that Q to N is sufficiently small to make the whole things here is less than, um, less than epsilon. So therefore like uh, this sequence is Cauchy, therefore this converge, um, um, I mean, and because it's complete, therefore it's converge to the fixed point, so therefore fixed point exists. Okay, yeah, that, that's basically the Banach fixed point theorem. So it's like, maybe I put it here again. Banach fixed point theorem saying that complete metric space then exists unique fixed point for Contraction mapping. So if I have the mapping is contraction, then I will have that unique fixed point. Okay, the proof here I am following mostly from the proof by like Professor Oliver Liu. Um, but as I mentioned, there's I think there's a bug somewhere. That I will I mention that that um, so uh, so I, I won't have a really complete proof, but almost complete proof. Um, so but his proof is really neat. Um, basically, think of like you have uh, the matrix A here. If we we call the Frobenius um, perm Frobenius theorem, is say, saying that like if the all positive matrix A here, and uh, I have A X. Um, is equal to, uh, well, what, what does the theorem say again? Uh, okay, it's uh, large with eigenvalue, it's all positive, right? AIJ is bigger than zero, and uh, it's eigenvalues, um, the maximum eigenvalues has a unique eigenvector, basically, 
and that you need eigenvectors uh, is all positive, can be all positive. And also like for all the other eigenvectors, it, the eigenvectors that's necessary to be eigenvectors of the largest eigenvalue uh, can, uh, can only have like, cannot be either all negative or all positive. Yeah, so basically the entire theorem is like that. So the idea is like, he, he tried to use the Banach fixed point theorem, so need to define mapping, right? So define a mapping, there's a contraction, contraction mapping. So you define mapping T as like uh, AX over AX. So it defined the uh, mapping here is uh, restrict to X is half, um, um, in the sets that like x1, the element here, oh, let me I just put like that. The second norm is equal to one. So, and uh, yeah, x in Rn. And um, so, and of course, this is a mapping, like it will map back to, maybe I call this a set X here, we we'll map back to X, right? So because say, this guy here, the second norm is still equal to one. Uh, so maybe like, I will emphasize the second norm here. Um, and, uh, and ge geometrically it's pretty neat. Like we, we can see that like this is actually a contraction because I, what happened is I, let's see, um, let's, because I, the matrix itself, like matrix itself, remember it's po all positive. And also like uh, X here is all positive as well. Uh, maybe I need to mention that X, X now. And, uh, and, uh, X, X i here is bigger than equal to zero for all i. Um, and uh, graphically, let's say, let's consider just a 2D case, like let's say A is a two by two, like kind of like can draw a figure to make it more easy to understand. So the space we're considering, this is like the X here basically. So, if I write the matrix A here uh, as a A1 and A2, so then AX will be like linear combination of the columns here. So because like, this is all positive matrix, right? So I will have like, let's say A1 is somewhere here. This is A1. And let's say this is A2 here. Now, the if I have like X is a, let's say, if X is a, one zero, then I will basically will map to, maybe I use this color for X is equal to one zero, let's say, then I will just have like AX is just equal to, to somewhere this one. And then I need to divide by the second norm. I will just map to this point here, right? So one zero, we basically map to here. And if I have like seal one, and I'll map to this point here, something like, and if I have a linear combination of them, it's like basically will will uh will be like four into like this region here. So therefore, like the original point, like uh, let's say one zero is basically contract to here, and Seal one will contract. Uh, yeah, seal one will contract to here, and um, all the other points will basically somehow like kind of squeeze a little bit, like in the mid. Uh, all the points like from here to here will squeeze a little bit into the region. Uh, here, uh, let me let me draw better. So what I mean is, I like for points in this range here, or like mm, how do I write better? On, on this here, on this layer here, we squeeze into points in this 
in this layer here. So apparently this is a contraction, right? T is apparently as a contraction. Okay, so since like T is a contraction mapping, so for there will be axis a x in this first quadrant here, this in this x here, such that like x will be a fixed point, and also x will be the unique fixed point. That will be the only fixed point. And note that that unique fixed point is just the eigenvalue. So since I t, uh, then I will have t x is just equal to x, or in other words, I will have like a x equal to a a x square time x. So, and uh, this, that's, this is basically just lambda, right? So it's therefore, x will be just an eigenvector. And also will be the unique eigenvector. And uh, such that this x here, consider all the x that is all positive, that will be unique. And also remember that from um, Banach fixed point theorem, the fixed point there would be just keep applying, uh, remember that like we got the fixed point as say, x0, then apply t, apply t to x0, and then t to x1, and this will be, this basically, this thing is x1, and so on and so forth. So um, if you look at this contraction here, once you apply the contraction, you, you kind of like get away, because I, we have, what I want to say here is that, because we have a1 and a2 are all positive, right? So, and uh, therefore like they will, they will be away from the axis here. So once you have the contraction, you are moving away the axis. So therefore like you won't have X that fall on the axis. So therefore like X cannot have any long negative element or so long zero element. So um, that's one thing I didn't emphasize earlier. Actually, I, I think I omit that. So uh, for the broad, um, broad uh, from business film, not just the eigenvector um, is non-negative as well, it will be positive. So all the elements will be, um, will has to be bigger than zero. And, uh, and uh, I'm okay, okay. So I, I guess I, as we continue to prove this, um, what we show here is that like there exists a, a eigenvector Actually, let me call it this a PF eigenvector for short. So this PF eigenvector uh, X, that is basically all positive, all element is positive. I just call it all positive for short. And, um, and PF eigenvalue is lambda, but we didn't show that this eigenvalue is actually the largest eigenvalue. Um, here is like where the uh, Professor Olive, Oliver Niels, um uh, proof breakdown, book down. Uh, there's a small bug there. It's basically he came, he tried to use um, the a fat, so it's not called right, basically, that ax is less than equal to uh, lambda x, something like. So this is the second norm, let's say. So um, this, of course, this is true when A is symmetric. So in that case, or, or if lambda is the single value, that would be true, right? But the problem here is that like um, A is not symmetric. In general, like the eigenvalue and, eigen, and, and the single value, uh, the two sets are not the same. So therefore like the maximum eigenvalue is not the same as the maximum single value. So therefore like this, this in general is not true. So that, that therefore like we, we cannot do that, right? Because like, we, we are not assuming that A is symmetric here. So instead, like I'm going to follow um the proof like I found like in a post on Stack Overflow. I guess I will put a link there as well. So um as as you show like as uh, as we have here, actually the same check that use this kind of app can be applied um not just from the right hand side right, can also apply from the left hand, left hand side left hand side what i mean is that like i don't necessarily multiply x multiply uh yeah a from the left but i i, I can also like think of t as a mapping on some y here maybe i call it tq to this time that like basically we multiply like from the left so i have y transpose a and then i div uh i'm divided by like the norm of y transpose a 
So again, for this kind of map and we map on this this axis here. I mean this uh, 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 what do I say? Like if this uh, x here, basically we define this x here, that is basically normalized to one, the norm is normalized to one, and also like all the element is positive. Um, and uh, of course it doesn't need necessarily why it's all positive, but if I restrict it also in this set like x here, then again, like by the same argument, it's a contraction mapping uh, in this set. And so therefore like there will be a fixed point in this set, and again, like because of that fixed point, I will have an eigenvector. So, but this time the eigenvector is multiplying from the left. Uh, so therefore, like I will have like let's say an eigenvector y transpose a is equal to lambda pi a y transpose. Let's say so basically multiply y transpose like the the whole vector from the left of the matrix A. Um, and, and I know that like these two eigenvector eigenvalues, I like, call this PF eigenvalues are the same. Uh, as you can see, because I am very simply, if you consider Y transpose A multiplied by X, then I can multiply from the left hand side, then I have AX is equal to lambda X, right? So therefore I have Y transpose lambda X for lambda L like that, way. Right? So, but I can also multiply like on the left, then I will have like y transpose a is equal to lambda pi y transpose like, uh, lambda pi y transpose x. So therefore you see like, because y and x um, by balance fixed point theorem, like it will be all positive eigenvectors. So therefore like this will be non zero, actually more precise will be bigger than zero. So therefore this got canceled, I have lambda pi is equal to lambda. So that, that uh, the two eigenvalues are the same. So now why they are the maximum eigenvalue? Uh, they are the maximum eigenvalue I can use. Okay, this I will, I probably need this sheet. I don't quite remember, it's very, very elegant. So what we did here is I um, basically consider that I have like any other eigenvector. Now I have of A, let's say I have A, W is equal to mu W here. So any other eigenfactor, I know that for this W, it cannot be all positive because if it's all positive, then uh, it will violate the Banach fixed point theorem we mentioned earlier. Because by Banach fixed point theorem, the the it should have a fixed point that has a unique fixed point, and that unique fixed point will be x here. So therefore, like for this W here, it cannot fall in the original set x here. So therefore like one of the element in W must be like uh, negative. So it can be some positive, some negative, but cannot be all positive or all negative. Of course it's all negative, it's the same as all positive. So it has to be like a mix of this positive and negative. Um, so uh, let's say I have A W is equal to mu W here. Now let me consider, um, uh, let's see. Uh, let me consider like W, absolute value of W multiplied by um, Y transpose and times mu. And this will be, okay, this will be equal to uh, I can put mu inside. So because mu, mu is just a constant, I don't care like, if it's positive or negative, but I can absorb into inside here because like, W is just a factor. So I can wait, Y transpose mu W, right? That, that's fine. And mu W, because it's a, it's just equal to A W, I have Y transpose A W. And now, now I claim that like this would be less than equal to mu, uh, wait a sec, sorry, u y transpose uh, a absolute w. Actually, I can, I can say stronger here is, of course, this this always whole, right? I have a, a w, like it's less than equal to 
the actual value a and then w. But I can say stronger that is actually um, a a strict inequality, as you can see, because I w is long um, w is like cannot be all positive. And a is this basically by the way is a positive matrix. So if you think of that, it's basically this product here is basically the sum of y i a a uh, sum over j that's i sum over i a uh, i j w j right and then I put an absolute value here somewhere and uh, so if I think of this part the j element of this guy uh, will be of course it's, this is less than equal to sum over j a i j absolute value and w j right so that's reasonable but it would be a strictly negative than that because I have W here. Some of the W here is actually negative, right? So if I look at um, this is, if you think of that, it's just a sum, let's say A, A, let me just A11, W1 plus A12, W2, let's say something like, and um, this is a A11, of course, if I have to write it outside, A11, W1, plus a12 w2 something like that if like i is one and j is like from one to two and, and then i because some of this value is negative right then apparently this would be like strictly this guy is strictly less than this sum here right okay i think i think it's clear that that's basically the 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 main step here so it's very reasonable but i just want to make it clear um and then I, so I know that A is an all positive matrix, right? So therefore this is just equal to Y transpose A absolute W here. Now, because I, we, we already have earlier, Y transpose A is just equal to lambda pi Y transpose A, and it will be a lambda pi Y transpose multiply W. And so now you see that like, therefore like mu here, absolute of mu here will be strictly less than lambda pi. So therefore, yeah, therefore, actually lambda, of course, earlier we say lambda, lambda pi and lambda is the same. So lambda will be the largest eigenvalue. And also like lambda will be um, simple. So it will only have one um, left eigenvector and one uh, white eigenvector. It cannot have multiple eigenvectors uh, from either from the left and one from the right. And that, that's basically um, the entire proof for the Baron uh, for Binus theorem. Um, so yeah, we, we show that like that would be like eigenvector, this will be all positive. And also like um, that, uh, yeah, uh, so um, that eigenvector is correspond to the largest eigenvalue. And also like that uh, eigenvector is unique and also like the largest eigenvalue is simple. So you can only have this one eigenvalue is basically the all positive eigenvalue. And uh, maybe maybe, maybe uh, I will just summarize uh, again like with the original motivation we try to use for, uh, from Binus theorem is for our uh, problem of um, uh, uh, what, what do I want to say actually? Oh, yes, like for the, our irreducible like Markov chain, if we have an irreducible Markov chain, then like, let's say the, the transition matrix is T here. And of course by itself it's not all positive, but like T to the power N like, for some N will be all positive. And so, so therefore like by Baruan for Venus theorem, it will have, the, it will have an eigenvalue that's unique or positive and, and that's, Actually, all positive unique eigenvector is just the uh, uh, steady state probability. And uh, the uniqueness is important, but I guess I for, I didn't emphasize at the beginning. I probably like, I, I, I uh, actually, it's not even I didn't emphasize. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't think of that like after, before I look, going through the, all the proof that um, we actually have the, the all positive, that the factor 
as I said, it's, it's not just non-negative, but it's all positive. Meaning that like for the steady state probability, uh, it cannot have any of the state it has a zero probability. So it makes lots of sense because uh, you, you have an irreducible Markov chain. Basically it's say like for any state, it can reach to any other state in some finite number of steps. So therefore like um, for any, when we reach the steady state, steady state probability, so there, there should be no one state that will have like zero probability. That's always possible that like we will reach that again. So therefore like none of state will have like zero probability. So, okay, I guess I will just uh, stop here. Uh, thank you for listening.